AI art, NFTs, layoffs, and just terrible business practices. This is something we're seeing more and more of lately, but one company over the past couple years has been extremely bad with this stuff, and that company is Hasbro. Hasbro owns some of the most amazing franchises in the world, and some of my personal favorites, such as Dungeons & Dragons, Magic the Gathering, Transformers, and a whole lot more. Unfortunately, over the past couple years, they've been going down a very, very dark path, leading a lot of people to abandon these beloved franchises or boycott them altogether. I want to go over some of the decisions that Hasbro has made lately, look at some of their projects, and see where everything went wrong. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, ring that bell, it really helps. Now let's jump into it. Hasbro has been a beloved toy and game company since 1923, and it is headquartered in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Hasbro owns trademarks and products for Milton Bradley, Parker Brothers, Wizards of the Coast, among a ton of other names that you've probably heard of. They own products like Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Nerf, Mr. Potato Head, Monopoly, and basically every big toy and game name you've ever heard of. In the past couple years though, they've made the unfortunate shift towards NFTs and AI art. And what first brought my attention to Hasbro is this. One of their upcoming Magic the Gathering sets featuring characters from the Final Fantasy franchise. As a huge fan of both Final Fantasy and Magic the Gathering myself, I was extremely excited for this collab. But then they released the artwork for the cards that they're going to use. And I'll show a few of them on screen here. As soon as Magic fans saw this art, immediate red flags started to go up. Magic is known for its extremely intricate and well done card art, and these don't really match the same level of quality. If you zoom in on Sephiroth's sword and on a couple of other pictures, you can clearly see that this art was made with AI. You can see his sword doesn't really attach to the hilt, the buckle on his belt is not the symbol that it usually is in the games, and other little things that are just off. There's even this whole diagram showing you exactly how this artwork is AI. It shows the disappearing katana into the guard right there. His outfit looks a little off with the extra buckle and the bands missing on his legs. His one winged angel medallion has no wing, and there's like hair strands coming down from the cave wall. Yeah, this, this looks awful. This is extremely unfortunate, but it is not Hasbro's first slip up. Back in 2022, Hasbro released a line of Funko Pop NFTs for multiple of their IPs. There were My Little Pony Funko NFTs, Transformer Funko NFTs, and Star Trek Funko NFTs. I know these NFTs are just Funko Pops, but my god, they're always so ugly. They even made Optimus Prime and Spock look terrible. How is that even possible? Even though back in 2022, these NFT sets sold out rapidly, the second wave of them that came out this year in 2024 did not do nearly as well, signaling that these decisions Hasbro is making is not resonating with their fanbase. Despite the backlash that Hasbro is getting though, they seem to be doubling down on these AI efforts. In a recent article, Hasbro's CEO said, quote, First off, we're doing R&D efforts around AI. I think most major entertainment and IP holders are at least thinking about it. The key there is the responsible use of it. We have an even higher bar we need to hit because we serve audiences of all ages. We go from preschoolers up onto adulthood. I don't think we can be very cavalier in how we think about AI. That said, it's exciting. There's a lot of potential for delighting audiences. We need to make sure that we do it in a way that respects the creators we work with, respects their work of art, respects their ownership of these works, and also creates a fun and safe environment for kids who might use it. He continues saying, D&D has 50 years of content that we can mine, literally thousands of adventures that we've created, probably tens of millions of words we own and can leverage. Magic the Gathering has been around for 35 years, more than 15,000 cards that we can use in something like that. Peppa Pig has been around for 20 years and has hundreds of thousands of hours of published content that we can leverage. Transformers, I've been watching Transformers TV shows since I was a kid in Cincinnati in the early 80s. We can leverage all of that to be able to build very interesting and compelling use cases for AI that can bring our characters to life. We can build tools that aid in content creation for users or create really interesting gamified scenarios around them. With this being said, there are specific use cases that are good for AI. But in the context of creativity and art, I just don't see that being the case. And to emphasize that point, Hasbro has had severe layoffs over the past couple years. Layoffs specifically in Hasbro's art department and at Wizards of the Coast have gone up past 1100 in the past couple years. All the while, the CEO's compensation has tripled in those years up to $9.3 million. 
Despite record profits for the company, and the CEO taking the biggest pay raise in recent years, the layoffs just seem to be getting worse. When talked to about the layoffs, he said, quote, Given the state of our business, the layoffs are a lever we must pull to keep Hasbro healthy. I know this news is especially difficult during the holiday season. We value each of our team members. They aren't just employees, they're friends and colleagues. Warden was a design director for Hasbro, working on popular toys like Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Star Wars. One of the first figures I worked on at Hasbro way back in Cincinnati, I was able to, back then, we didn't have a lot of computer work to do, so I drafted this entire figure by hand. But this week, his dream was cut short. Warden was let go from the company, part of what a Hasbro spokesperson called a restructuring. In a year that saw record growth for the digital gaming department, and Wizards of the Coast also seeing a 20% growth in the third quarter of 2023, it seems unlikely that these layoffs were necessary. Wizards of the Coast and digital gaming revenue was up 40% compared to previous years. This was due to the critical success of the highly popular Lord of the Rings series, reaching $200 million in sales, and the success of Baldur's Gate 3. Wizards of the Coast took in $120 million more than last year. In this tweet from one of the lead developers at Larian Studio who made Baldur's Gate 3, he's thanking the Dungeons & Dragons team at Wizards of the Coast for letting them use all the D&D material in Baldur's Gate 3. Though he says, I'm really sorry to hear so many of you were let go. It's a sad thing to realize that of all the people who were in the original meeting room, there's almost no one left. It's astounding to hear about this many layoffs in a company that is so profitable and makes some of the biggest names in gaming. These layoffs combined with the shift towards AIR and NFTs really emphasize that this is all just corporate greed. They would rather use AI to make their art than pay actual artists. And now that they have so much in their backlog with D&D, Magic the Gathering, and all of their 30 plus year old franchises, they don't need people to make new art. They can dump all of that into a machine and have AI pump out new stuff using their old stuff as reference. Along with the use of AI art, the use of NFTs was announced all the way back in 2022, when Hasbro put out this trademark application. It reads, Downloadable electronic publications in the nature of newsletters and magazines in the fields of toys, games, and playthings. Downloadable virtual goods, namely computer programs featuring animated characters and accessories for use online and in online virtual worlds. Downloadable digital collectibles, digital tokens, and digital files. Downloadable multimedia files containing artwork relating to toys, games, and animation authenticated by non-fungible tokens. Downloadable image files containing artwork, memes, and animation authenticated by non-fungible tokens. This was obviously at the peak of the NFT and metaverse hype, but the fact that they've not pulled back and are just going full steam ahead with this stuff is a terrible decision. The NFTs aren't selling as well anymore, no one wants to buy the magic packs with AI art, they're losing goodwill, and they're laying off a large chunk of their employees. Such a big company being so out of touch isn't that uncommon. It's just unfortunate that these decisions are impacting all these series that we all know and love. A lot of these Hasbro properties are my childhood and the stuff that I love even today, like D&D and Magic. It really is a shame to see Hasbro go down this route. I just hope that other companies don't follow suit. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Are you okay with AI art and NFTs in your products as long as you get more of it? Or does it stop you from wanting to support the company? I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.